In this video, we have a closer look at the relationship between Chomsky three grammars and regular languages. To get an idea about the relationship between Chomsky three grammars and uh, regular languages, we simply take one grammar, like this one here, and we start a derivation. So we start with the, with the start symbol s, and we use a production rule, replacing the s by as, and then we apply the same rule again and again, and then we might uh, take another rule and uh, um, get another uh, non-terminal. But there's one thing we, we already see, and we see that in each sentential form we have exactly one non-terminal, and this non-terminal is always the rightmost symbol in our sentential form. Doesn't matter what, what kind of uh, production we, we take, it, uh, it stays there. And in each step, we generate one terminal, which we add to the sentential form to the right. And we continue until we use a production that replaces this um, non-terminal on the right by one terminal or by the empty word. So we have the idea that this non-terminal, this rightmost non-terminal that we have in each sentential form is more or less kind of a state determines what kind of productions we can use and depending on the production we use we add one uh, one letter to the right and this uh, looks very much like uh, the behavior of a finite automaton so we might guess that actually the uh, Chomsky three languages are the same languages that could be accepted by a finite automaton and this is actually the case um, we have a theorem. This theorem says a language L is regular if and only if L is Chomsky 3. So the Chomsky 3 languages are exactly the regular languages. We recall here the definition of the Chomsky 3 grammars and the important part is that we have three kinds of production. We've seen already all uh, examples in the, uh, in the derivation in the previous example and the three kind of kinds of productions are that we replace a non-terminal A by exactly one terminal and one non-terminal or by one terminal or by the empty word. Now we want to prove this theorem. We've already seen that there is a close uh, connection to the finite automata and this is the, uh, this is the connection we are going to exploit in the proof. As the theorem says that the regular languages and the Chomsky three languages are the same, we have two, uh, two directions to prove. So we start with the first direction, with the only if uh, direction, and we take a non-deterministic finite automaton and construct a Chomsky three grammar that uh, generates the same language that's accepted by the automaton. How does it work? The idea is quite simple. We start with an automaton. Now to write down the proof, we give it a name and we call it A. And then we name all the components. So we have a, a finite set of state, we have the alphabet, the input alphabet, we have a transition um, function delta, an initial state, and um, a set of final states. Now we construct a grammar, and again we have to give it names, and we call this grammar G, and we say, okay, the set Q is actually the set of non-terminals and the set of non-terminals of our grammar is the same set as the set of states in the automaton. That corresponds to the idea that this non-terminal actually was something like a state. The alphabet sigma is the same, so there's nothing uh, to change here. P we are going to consider later, the set of productions, and Q0, which is the initial state here in the uh, finite automaton, is our um, start symbol for the grammar. Now the idea is that for each transition that we have in the automaton, transition looks like this, we, we are in state Q, we read an A and move to a state Q prime, we add a production rule that mimics exactly this behavior. So we add a rule saying, okay, if our letter to the right, the, the rightmost non-terminal is a Q, then we can add an A and then the rightmost uh, um, non-terminal is Q prime. So 
these are the normal productions and then we have to deal with the accepting. Accepting for finite automata means that um, if the word uh, is processed completely and we uh, end up in an accepting state, then the word is accepted. So what we do here is that if we decide that we have uh, produced all the letters that are required, we simply replace our uh, non-terminal QF by the empty word. Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, an example. Let's take this automaton here. It has only three states. And these three states, Q0, Q1 and Q2, they form the uh, non-terminals for our grammar. Our alphabet is still A and B, same as for the automaton. Then we have a set of productions we are creating later. And our initial uh, uh, symbol, our start symbol, is Q0, which, is, uh, which corresponds to the initial state of the automaton. Now we go through all the uh, transitions. So we take this transition here at first. It's from Q0 to Q1 with an A. And we simply add a production from Q0 that, that replaces Q0 by A followed by Q1. Then we take the next uh, transition from Q1 to Q0 with an A and we add a corresponding production. There's an alternative. From Q1 we can also read a B and go to Q2. So we add an alternative here in the grammar as well, adding um, that we can all, uh, also replace Q1 by B followed by Q2. Then we have this loop at Q2, meaning that we can uh, we have a transition from Q2 reading B and end up in Q2. So same uh, or similar uh, production rule for the grammar. And finally, we have to consider that Q2 is an accepting state. So we also allow the um, production to end here by replacing the the derivation to end here by replacing the Q2 by the empty word epsilon. And now we have considered all the transitions and our grammar is complete. And now for the if direction, we start with a grammar, with a uh, Chomsky 3 grammar. And again, we name the components. So our grammar has a set of non terminals and the alphabet sigma, set of productions P and the start symbol S. And we construct a now from this grammar, we construct a corresponding automaton A, it's an NFA, and this NFA should accept the same language. And first we define the set of states for this new automaton, and the new automaton has all the non-terminals from the grammar as states, and one new fresh state that we need for special productions later on. Alphabet is the same, delta, the transition function we, we are going to define, the initial state is, of course, the start symbol, and f will be defined also later on. Now, we have three different types of production rules in our grammar. And for each of the production rules, we define what, what kind of transitions we would like to add. Let's take the first allowed production rule in Chomsky 3 grammars. That's this one. We replace the non-terminal a by the terminal a and the non-terminal B. This very much looks like a transition and we've exploited this relation uh, before. So we add a transition from the state A, so A in the automaton is the state, to B by consuming the uh, lowercase a from the input. So that's easy. Now we have also uh, productions like this one here in which we replace a non-terminal by exactly one terminal. Now the problem is as the idea is that we are in this uh, state A in the automaton, we we have to do two things when when we um, do this when we take this production rule. The idea is that the production ends because the the only occurring non-terminal is replaced by a terminal, so there are no non-terminals left. So the, the 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 production of the the word must end the derivation. So our automaton should be accepting, and we realize this easily by adding a transition from the state A to our new fresh um, final state QF, consuming the lowercase a in the process. And the QF, hence the name, um, 
is uh, make an accepting is made an accepting state. And finally, there's uh, another rule we have to consider, and this this one, uh, in which we replace a non-terminal by the empty word epsilon, and we can easily mimic this in the automaton by just making a accepting, because then we simply can uh, in the production in the derivation we can simply take the a out and replace it by epsilon, so the derivation is complete. And this actually corresponds to accepting the word in the automaton. Now let's see uh, an example how it works. We take this grammar here, which is by, uh, by coincidence the same grammar we started with. We now construct the automaton. The set of non-terminals is S and A in our grammar, so our automaton gets three states. The S, the A from the grammar, and the new fresh state QF, which I made accepting right away. Now we go through all the uh, productions. We have a production that replaces S by the lowercase a and an S, so we add this loop here in the automaton. We take the next um, production rule. This replaces S by lowercase a and uppercase a, so we get this transition here in the automaton. Now we have this uh, transition in which we can replace the S by the empty word, so we make S accepting. Going further through the uh, productions, we have this production rule here, which replaces the A by the lowercase b and an uppercase a, so we get a loop again. And finally we have the possibility to replace the A by an b, so we get a transition to our uh, state QF. And this actually completes the construction. So now we've seen how to construct an automaton for a given grammar and vice versa. So both uh, classes are actually the same.